Hello everybody and welcome back. So today we're going to be rounding out my R Fantasy bingo card from 2022 and talking about the brand new bingo card that has come out for 2023. R Fantasy is a Reddit fantasy bingo card and essentially what it is is a card that gives you different prompts and your goal is to fill up the whole bingo card and you can actually submit that and it's a really fun like thing to be able to follow along with the group and get recommendations and all of that but I use it as a primarily way to expand my reading, find new books and new things that I wouldn't necessarily gravitate toward in order to fit these prompts. There is an easy mode and a hard mode. I tend to try to do hard mode whenever possible and I am pleased to say that I was able to fulfill the hard mode for the entire bingo card of 2022. So I'm going to show you guys what it ended up looking like here. We're not going to go through all of the prompts. I do have a TBR for the 2022 board which is very different than this particular card because I was switching things in and out as I really they fit or didn't fit different prompts but I also have an update of what prompts I was missing and what things I was going to be filling in that is a lot more accurate on my channel that I'll list up below up above in case you guys want to check out that but this is the card if you go on and just google our fantasy bingo 2022 it'll give you all the prompts you can match them up if you're curious on what I used let's talk about the 2023 board this runs from April 1st to March 31st every year so it literally just got released and I spent my entire day on Saturday trying to figure out what I was going to be reading for some of these prompts now I was not able to fill every single prompt and that's where I'm going to need you guys guys' help to help me figure out, first of all, if the books that I chose actually fit the prompts that I chose them for, because obviously I haven't read these books. So if you're seeing me say that something is going to fit for something or fit for hard mode and you're like, no, nah, girl, that's not going to work. Let me know because obviously I haven't read the books. And then I'm also going to need you guys' help with a couple of them that I was just stuck and struggling with. So let's jump into the bingo board. We're just going to be going like across. I'm going to walk you through each prompt, what the hard mode is, and then what the book is that I'm thinking of reading for that. I'm not going to be giving you synopses in this video because we're going to be here long enough as it is. But let's go through and see if what I'm going to be reading for our fantasy bingo 2023. I'm going to scoot over just a little bit so I have more room to show you guys everything up here. Okay, so for the first space, we have title with a title. So this is to read a book where the novel has a job title, military title, um, title of royalty or nobility, and it can be something that is bestowed upon the character as well as like a job title. And the hard mode for this is that it's not a title of royalty. Now, I'm not 100% sure that this is going to be the book that is sticking, but I did definitely want to go ahead and get something on for this prompt. So I think we're going to do The Dragon Reborn by Robert Jordan for this one. The Dragon is a bestowed upon title. It's not really a title of royalty, so I still think it counts for hard mode, but it is a bestowed upon title to one of the characters. I don't tell you which character, but you already know who that is. So I think for this one, we're going to do The Dragon Reborn. Then for the next prompt over is superheroes, and that is a story that focuses on the superpowered individuals. The hard mode is that it's not related to DC or Marvel. Now notice that it says superheroes, but it doesn't say that it can't be an anti-hero. So I still need to read Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. This book was gifted to me, I think by Clementine, and I've just not read it. I don't know why I haven't read it yet, but there's talks of a third one coming out. I really enjoyed Vicious, and so I definitely want to get this one on the board. They're absolutely super powered individuals. My backup for this one is possibly Hinch. I'm not 100% sure who Hinch is by, but that is my backup if for some reason Vengeful wouldn't work out. Next we have Bottom of the TBR, and that's just one of the books that has been on your TBR the longest. The Hard Mode, there isn't one. I kind of wish they had done a hard mode for this one, but they decided not to. So um, the hard mode for this one doesn't exist. And I think I'm going to go with Priest of Bones by Peter McLean for this one. Um, it's been on my TBR for quite some time. I picked it up used a long time ago, but that's I think what I'm going to fit on here. Honestly, there are quite a few books that could go in this spot. So that could end up kind of changing depending on what I get to. And if I get to another TBR vet a little bit sooner than that one. But for now, that one's the one I'm most excited about on my TBR vet. So I'm going to put that there. Then going over again, we have magical realism or literary fiction. I absolutely hate this prompt. <laughs> for one, it's a little bit confusing. It says portrays magic or unreal elements in an otherwise realistic or mundane environment. 
to me that almost seems more like urban fantasy but then they go on to say that they're often found in literary fiction and they're not always shelved as a genre fiction. Um, it's a hard square to pin down and the hard mode is that it's not one of the 30 books listed in the um, ideas or guidelines prompt. And for this one I'm honestly not really sure. Um, one of the suggestions when I looked like because our Reddit has a big suggestions thread for each and every prompt. And one of the suggestions was Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I have started this book and stopped like four different times. Not because I wasn't enjoying it, but just because it's kind of weird and you have to be in the mood for it. So I think I'm going to use that for this prompt. So one of the rules for this is that you can replace one prompt from a prompt previous, like any of the years previous. Last year I did replace the, um, I think it was one of the anthology prompts with a first person prompt, but this year I could end up replacing this one with what I don't know, but I also want to replace the book club prompt, which we're going to get to later. So I don't know. I may, I may end up reading Piranesi. It's short. I do still own it, so I need to read it, but magical realism and literary fiction and I just do not get along. Then moving over to the last space on the first row, we have Young Adult. Read a book that's written for young adults but that's been published in the last five years. Two different options for this one, but I think the one that I'm going to go with is Fury Song by Rosaria Munda. Obviously, you guys have probably, I don't know if you heard me talk about how good Fireborn was yet, but Fireborn was one of my favorite books that I've read this year so far. It completely took me by surprise and I absolutely loved it. So I'm, I'm definitely going to be finishing out the series this year. That one's YA. It was published last year. So the paperback isn't even out yet. Definitely counts, but I'm so excited to read this book and I'm actually excited for this square when normally I might not be. Then moving down to the second row we have a mundane job. So the protagonist has a commonplace job that can be found in the real world so they can't be um, monster hunters. It says princes but that's kind of annoying because princes do exist but anyway no monster hunters or wizards or anything like that and they're not gonna allow you to use soldiers because that's really prominent in science fiction and fantasy. The hard mode for this one is that it doesn't take place on earth and this one was a little bit more challenging, but I think I'm going to end up going with one that most people are probably going to choose, and that's Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This is a prequel, I think, to Legends and Lattes, which I read and had a decent time with. It's cozy fantasy, so it's not really my jam, but... I liked it well enough that I would be willing to try another one of his. And the main character in this is a bookseller. It's not set on Earth. It's set in an alternate fantasy world. So I think that at the moment, that's what I'm going to be using for this prompt. And then to the next one, we have published in the thousands. So read a book that was published between 2000 and 2009. The hard mode is that it's not on the top 30 R fantasy best of 2023 list. I don't have a book for this one yet. I don't think it'll be that hard to find one, but I just don't really know exactly pinpointed down what I want to read for this yet. I had a couple of things that are published, I think, pre-2000s that I could read, like Hyperion, but I don't have anything from 2000 to 2009 just like in mind. So if there's a book that you're like, I know, I know what you need to read. This one's perfect. Absolutely. Let me know down in the comments below because that's definitely an open square for me. Next up, we have angels and demons. So the story must feature angels or demons or both in a prominent role. And the hard mode is that the protagonist is an angel or demon. I feel like there's a lot more um, books that would count for this one, but I haven't read it yet. I do kind of want to try it. So I think I'm going to go with Good Omens by Neil Gaiman. This one is probably, again, one that lots of people will use if they haven't read it yet. Small Miracles by um, Olivia Atwater would definitely 100% count for this role as well. Good Omens. I haven't read it. It's a fan favorite. Everybody loves it. I haven't even seen the TV show, but I do want to. So I think that this might be the year that I finally get to it. But I'm absolutely open to suggestions for this one. So let me know down in the comments below if there's a different book that you recommend because I'm not just like married to the book for this prompt. So please let me know if you have any suggestions. Then moving on to five sci-fi fantasy short stories. Any sci-fi fantasy short story, as long as there are five of them, it doesn't have to be a whole collection. However, if I want it to be hard mode, then it does have to be a whole anthology or collection. I have several different options for this one, which is surprising because I don't usually read short stories. Gleanings by Neil Shusterman is the one that I have in the slot right now. Cassidy read it earlier this year and loved it. I also have Rivers of Silver by S.A. Chakraborty, and then the Mistborn um, Archive by Brandon Sanderson would also count for this prompt. So any of those three I could end up doing in this spot. If you've read one or the other and you absolutely love them or like, mm, 
maybe skip that. Let me know because again, I can interchange any of those three in this prompt. Um, and then the last one on this row is horror, which I was super excited to see. And this is just any book from the horror genre. The hard mode is not Stephen King or H.P. Lovecraft, which I feel like is kind of a slightly lame hard mode because like that's easy. So for this one, I have got in The Passage by Justin Cronin. Who knows that that will be, will be what I stick to. The horror for this one is, is slightly more complicated than they make it sound because it does have to be a speculative horror. It can't just be like a slasher. I read a lot of horror. Like that's something that I've really been wanting to branch out on this year and read more of. So I feel like it's going to be relatively easy for me to come up with a book for that prompt. I'm not married to this one, but again, I do really want to read it. So that's why I put it in this section. It involves vampires, so I know that it's speculative and it'll count. But again, give me your recommendations down below. Very interested in all of the horror recommendations, so let me know. Then we're moving down to the third row, and the first prompt for this is a self-published or indie. You guys have heard me talk about indie a lot. I read a lot of indie. This is not going to be hopefully a hard prompt for me to fill. The um, hard mode for this one is has fewer than 100 ratings on Goodreads or has done an AMA with our fantasy. This was a prompt that they had last year, and I ended up using one of the SPFBO books, which will probably be what I end up doing doing this year to be honest but I did want to put a book in this prompt and I feel like Cassidy has shouted about Nomads of the Sea by Colby Zucker over and over and over again and it actually only has 15 ratings on Goodreads which shocked me at the time of me filming this so I actually marked it down because if that changes from everybody talking about it I it's gonna count. <laughs> um, but this one is super long and it's seafaring and she absolutely loved a lot of the discussions that were had in this one. So I am definitely going to consider it for this prompt because I've been meaning to read it since she was shouting about it. Then next up we have a prompt that they also used last year and that is set in the Middle East or Middle Eastern sci-fi fantasy. The hard mode is that the author is of Middle Eastern heritage and for this one I think I'm going to do The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdallah. She is from Kuwaiti. Did I say that right? Probably not. Definitely counts for hard mode. It's a book that I started last year and put down for other commitments and just forgot to pick back up. So I definitely want to continue. The sequel is already out. Another good one that would count for this is any of Tay Thompson, which again, you're going to see a little bit later, or um, Rage of Dragons, Fires of Vengeance, The Evan Winters. If we end up getting Evan Winters third book of this year, early next year, that'll probably get swapped in because I'm so freaking hyped for that book. But we don't have a release date for that yet. So I couldn't put it in the... Um, prompts for this because I don't know when we're going to get it. Then we have published in 2023 and the hard mode is that it is a debut novel. Don't have a book in this one yet. I know that I'm going to come up on a ton of new releases that I'm super excited about but for now I don't have anything that I'm like tip top anticipating so I left the square open. Let me know down in the comments once again any of your speculative horror science fiction or fantasy mm -hmm. books that are going to be published this year that are a debut author. So that's the tricky part is there are a ton of books coming out this year that I'm excited about but it needs to be an author's debut. So let me know down in the comments if there's one like on your radar because I absolutely want to know and I want to put all of them on my list obviously. And then we have one that is slightly confusing. <laughs> I still don't fully understand this prompt so if somebody gets it let me know but it's multiverse and alternate realities which doesn't sound hard. However, it's a book in which setting contains at least two different universes, dimensions, planes, realities, etc. that the character within the book can travel between. Multiple worlds on the same physical plane, such as planets within a universe, would not count for this square. So like science fiction where you go into a different planet doesn't count. Hard mode is that characters do not walk through a literal door to get to the other world. So for example, the Wayward Children's books would not fit for this prompt because they literally open a door to get to the other reality. Someone suggested that Infinity Gate by M.R. Carey would work for this prompt in the recommendation thread. Do I know if it's actually going to fit? No. Do I absolutely plan to read it this year? Yes. So I will find out whether or not this fits and if it does, great. If it doesn't, I'll find a different book. Um, I have a feeling that a certain series that I'm reading will fit. However, I'm not going to tell you what that is because that will be spoilery if I were to, but I could end up using that for this prompt as well. Let me know, again, if you have any suggestions because this one was slightly tricky. Then one that is now going to be a recurring prompt every single year, and that is a POC author. The hard mode is going to change every year to a different genre, and for this year it's science fiction. For this one, I think I'm going to be doing Rosewater by Tay Thompson. Tay Thompson is one that wrote the Molly Southbourne series, and I might end up actually switching that in, although I'm not sure if, like, 
like a speculative enough science fiction to count, but maybe. But I'm excited to finally get to some Tate Thompson. If you guys have other suggestions for this prompt, absolutely let me know. This is definitely going to actually count as a recommendation thread for other people that are planning to participate in our fantasy. So for any of these prompts, if you have suggestions, leave them down in the comments, but especially for some of the ones I'm struggling with. So for this one, I think that's what I'm going to do. I do have some authors of color that are fantasy authors, but I don't find them as much in science fiction. So please, please, please let me know down in the comments below if you have recommendations, because I just want more in general to read from. So it always helps to have good recommendations. And that was the third row. So now we're moving on to the fourth row. We're getting there. I know we've been here a while, but let's just keep going. A book club or a read along book. So it can be any active or past our fantasy book club, as well as any past or active our fantasy read alongs. That's the annoying part. I kind of stretched this or was going to stretch this last year to be any of my book clubs that I participate in. But technically, if you submit it, it's supposed to be our fantasy. And the hard mode is that it's a current selection and you have to participate in the discussion. That's why I don't love this prompt because I'm not real active on our fantasy or on Reddit. I just like to participate in the bingo. And last year I ended up actually fulfilling this one with dead silence, but I'm not 100% sure if I'll get to this year. So I may end up switching this out. They don't have book clubs, like which books they're gonna be reading out far enough yet for me to actually put a book in for this prompt. So it's kind of sitting there empty for now. Then novella, read a work of fiction between 17,500 words and 40,000 words. The novella is not published by Tor.com Publishing. For this one, I think I'm gonna do Turtle Boy by Keelan Patrick Burke. This is a horror that seems from reading the back of it to be speculative. I've read several Keelan Patrick Burks um, in the last year or so and really, really enjoyed them and I'm excited to continue reading from him. There are a ton of horror novellas that I could choose for this that aren't published by Tor.com Publishing. They're actually indie, so I'm excited to pick up more of those. This one's interchangeable, but I do own this and am excited to read it. So I figured I'd go ahead and get it in this spot. Then we've got Mythical Beast. Read a book that prominently features at least one mythical beast, a creature that doesn't exist in reality. The hard mode is that it's not a dragon or dragon-like creature such as a weirbrin. And for this one, I think I'm going to do The Bone Shard War by Andrea Stewart. There is a Mephi in this book. And if you have not read it yet to find out who Mephi is, you should. I didn't absolutely love the second book, but I'm excited to see how everything rounds out in the conclusion. And so I am really hoping to get to this one. Absolutely would count. Another one that I can recommend that would count as well is the um, Ninth Rain by Jen Williams. That one would be a great choice for this. There's several different options that are good for this one, but those two are the first two that come to mind. Then we have Elemental Magic. Read a book that has a magic that deals with classical elements such as earth, wind, air, water, and fire. Cannot be Shades of Magic or Codex Alera. This one's empty right now. I don't want to read Sword of Kaigen. I know that's going to be the recommendation from a lot of people. I've tried it. It just wasn't working for me. So I don't want to commit to it for our fantasy. But if you have any other suggestions, please, please, please let me know down in the comments below. I want to shy away from like manga and graphic novels as well. I want these to be actual novels or novellas. So please give me suggestions down in the comments if you have any for elemental magic. Then we have myths and retellings. Read a book that is based on a myth or pre-existing story. And the hard mode is to do one that is not Greek or Roman mythology. One of the ones that I was initially considering is The Stars Undying by Emery Robin, but that one is a Cleopatra retelling and Roman inspired, so it's not going to count for hard mode. I think The Angel of Crows by Catherine Addison would count for this one. Um, per Emma, it is a Sherlock retelling, so I may end up going with this one, but if you guys have, again, any other suggestions, let me know down below. So that count, that gets our whole fourth row. Let's move down to the fifth and final row. The first is a queer norm setting, a book set in a world where queerness is normalized, accepted, and prevalent within the communities. The hard mode is that it's not a futuristic setting. It has to be set in a time akin to ours in the past or in a fantasy world that has no science fiction elements. For this one, I had to bust out the recommendations thread because I feel like that unfortunately is not really talked about in reviews or on the back of books. So it was a little bit hard for me to know for sure if it was a queer norm setting. Like you'll hear a lot of times that there are um, queer characters, but you don't always know if it's a queer norm setting. So for this one, somebody recommended Inda by Sherwood Smith. If it counts, please let me know because this one's one that Cassidy, rec or Cassidy has on her TBR that looked really interesting. So I'm curious about it for sure. If it doesn't fit, give me a recommendation. Um, and then we have coastal or island setting. It's a major setting that features the sea or is surrounded by the sea. 
The hard mode is that it also features sea fairing. Now books like Call of the Bone Ships would have been great for this one. Amina al Sarafi would have been great for this one. I don't always love seafaring books but it's something that I want to like. So ended up seeing a lot of people re recommending Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson that just came out. I asked Rachel. She said it absolutely counted. So I think that that's what I'm gonna put in this spot for now. Again, give me recommendations if you got them. The next one is Druids, a book that heavily features Druids. It can be a classic Druid, a priest, or a magician in Celtic lore, or a magic user whose power is coming from nature. Hard mode is that it's not the Iron Druid Iron Druid Chronicles. The Ember Blade, I think, would count for this, but I've already read that, so I think I'm going to end up doing The Druid by Jeff Wheeler. I could end up doing The Shadow Casket by Chris Wooding, but that book is really, really long, and I will leave up my vlog up here where I read The Ember Blade, but it did not go spectacularly, so I don't know that I really want to commit to The Shadow Casket. So for now, I'm going to be doing The Druid by Jeff Wheeler. Um, then second to last is a book featuring robots, androids, clockwork machines, or automations. The hard mode is that the robot is the protagonist. So I have a couple of different options. One is Murderbot by Martha Wells. Any in that series would count, but also considering the Archive Undying, which is what I'm going to be putting in for this prompt, pretty sure that it's about AIs that are considered gods and what if the gods gets brought back to life and that's who we're following. So I definitely think that it would count for this one. It's coming out I think this month in April sometime and I'm really excited to give it a try. And then the very last prompt is a sequel and the hard mode is a book that is three plus in a series. For this one I'm just going to toss in Holy Sister by Mark Lawrence but honestly it could be any sequel that is a three plus in the series and I have several of them. I need to finish out the Expanse series this year. Like there's so many that I could read for this prompt that that's definitely interchangeable. But for now, that's what I want to get to. Whew. Okay, so that took a while. That is my tentative TBR here for our Fantasy 2023. You can see the squares that are open that either I need recommendations for or just have not selected a book for yet. Let me know down in the comments, again, any and all of your suggestions, because I'm hoping that other people that want to participate in this that need suggestions can find some in your comments as well. So for any prompt, let me know if you have recommendations for it. And let me know if you're going to be participating. Our fantasy is something that Rachel introduced me to last year, and it was just really fun to do. I don't feel like BookTube really reaches out into the Reddit sphere very often, so hopefully this will broaden our horizons and get some people to read things that they would not normally read. Thank you guys so very much for watching. As always, links to my Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads are all in the description box down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you want to, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.